thank you guys for coming, um, especially in the sweltering heat, when you could be doing jumping jacks on the lawn somewhere. Um, I wanted to talk today with you. Last year I spoke about the efficacy of lineage, how important it is to find a teacher, and when you find the right one, to put your feet, your head on their feet and offer every aspect of yourself to that teacher in the hopes that in return, they would give you the key to the kingdom, the kingdom being your own enlightenment. Well, I did that, and it didn't work out very well. So today I'm here to tell you something 100, or what is it, 360 degrees? 360 degrees different. And as one of my teachers said in a yoga class, I went on a retreat in Mexico, and this wonderful teacher, Heidi Fokane, she said, um, there was two teachers teaching, and she said, the day she taught, she said, so if the other teacher, who's her co-teacher, said something different yesterday than what I'm saying today, too bad. My boyfriend was like, did you just hear her say that? Too bad? And then she said, that's life. Things change. Get used to it. Buddhism says the same thing. Things are changing all the time. So I have changed completely as a result of the journey, the spiritual journey I've taken over the past year. I was born into the patriarchy, as all of you were, and at the risk of inflaming all the women in the room who hate that word feminist, and I want to make a distinction between feminist and the feminine. Feminist is a political and appropriate reaction to a global deprivation of 50% of the population, the female population. The feminine, the divine feminine, is something completely different, self-standing, and utterly has nothing whatever to do with the male value structure that we've all been inculcated on. We can talk more about that later. But I was born into the belly of the patriarchy. You guys got to be quiet back there. I was born into the belly of the patriarchy. My father was a partner at Morgan Stanley, which at one time was actually an admirable thing to be. My mother had gave birth to me when she was 20. I was conceived on their honeymoon. She dropped out of college to support my father through Harvard Business School. We moved to Tokyo. In Tokyo, uh, actually, my father took me on a trip to Singapore, and the woman he left me with to watch over me took me immediately out from the hotel to buy me a full-color picture Bible. And I was thrilled. It's like, you know, one of the, like this, with pictures on every page, and the stories were really simple fables from the Bible. And, I came home and my father was like, what is that? Because he was, he liked to say, an atheist. And I was like, it's this beautiful book. I don't know. It's about this guy named Jesus. Now, my mother was a Catholic, raised a Catholic. Part of this talk will be about you coming into the understanding that all of the patrilineal, masculine-centric structures in the world are slowly being dismantled, beginning with the Catholic Church, and ending with the latest male guru sex scandals that are happening in the yoga world. Um, our planet is heading towards destruction. Woman and earth, or the feminine and earth, are synonymous. Take a shit on the earth and you take a shit on a woman. Mistreat a woman and you're mistreating the earth. The masculine imperative has driven us to perceive the earth and the feminine as something to be exploited, used, and then thrown out or traded up. Such a perspective, since it's gone madly out of balance, is responsible for the current degradation of our planet and the parallel degradation of the female gender. I still have teacher trainees in my training program who think that it is empowered, that they are liberated, if they are allowed to have one night stands with impunity, just like the boys not recognizing that that old, decayed, and stale understanding of what your sexuality and what your energy is for is exactly what leads to the condition that we find ourselves in today. Woman and earth is synonymous, or the feminine, you could say, and men have feminine, we have both, the masculine and the feminine within us. But the masculine has taken over. Do we, are we in agreement with that a little bit? The masculine, which is beautiful when it's in balance, is about dividing and separating and measuring, distincting between this and that, you and me, us and them, Jew and Christian, black and white, rich and poor. The feminine is an entirely different dynamic. 
The feminine enjoins you to embrace all things, to perceive all things as your very own, as your child, as your mental offspring, you could say. There is no division in the feminine between nature and woman, woman and all creation, or the feminine and all creation. I'll be using woman, but I mean the feminine, and I'll say man, but I mean the masculine, so you'll have to get used to I'm doing it, because it's too long to say the feminine and the masculine every two seconds. Um, and so, what I'm hoping to do today, and with the Conquering Line teacher training program, which is shifting its focus away from the extraordinarily masculine lineage of Tibetan Buddhism, it's not like we're ever going to see a female Dalai Lama, do you think? Okay. Recently, I spoke at a wedding, my cousin's wedding, at an Episcopal church in Delaware, and it was so beautiful. I, for the first time, I understood why people got married. <laughs> I've avoided it, like, neatly. I've sidestepped it my whole life, okay? There's been, like, seven proposals, and I'm like, um, I gotta go. <laughs> and so, not to be like, I got seven proposals, I just mean, you know, I'm 46, so they've been coming, you know, with some regularity now. And I always bow out. <laughs> and I went to this wedding, and I was like, oh, I get it. You know, I was crying, it was my cousin, I love her so much, and it was so beautiful. But they asked me to do a reading. So I got the reading at home, and I'm looking at the reading, and it's talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy frickin' Spirit. And it's so great that we're in a church today. <laughs> so apropos. <laughs> so I said to my cousin, I said, do you mind, do you think the priest, the minister, whatever they're called, the, the, the mediator between you and the highest, right? The rabbi, the priest, the whatever it is, you, the person that's supposedly the conduit between you and the divine. You gotta have them around, otherwise, you know, your ass is grass. You have no connection to the holy. Okay, so I said to my cousin, I said, do you think he'll mind if I just sneak in the father, the mother, the holy spirit, the daughter? <laughs> and she's like, you know, super strict in the church. They didn't let cameras in. They didn't let um, the wedding planner in. The doors were locked. I was late. I mean, we got in just under the wire. <laughs> and I came into the church late, and he goes, he's like this. And I'm like, so she said, no, are you crazy? And she's an ardent feminist. She went to Columbia, you know, the whole nine. Are you crazy? I said, no, I don't understand. I haven't been to a church in a while, but what is this stuff about the father, the spirit? You know, where's the woman in all this? You know, in the Western myth of creation, which all of us were weaned on, whether it was culturally or religiously, in the Garden of Eden, woman is cursed. And she curses the earth, and they're thrown out of Eden into self-consciousness. There is no role for the woman in the, in the myth of creation that we have. Where are you in that? You're the problem. You're the bad seed. You're what made the whole thing go wrong. How do you feel about that, ladies? You all right with that? Everyone's like, you, you're only like three of them are going, no, I'm not. <laughs> the rest of you are all right with that. You know, no, of course not, right? Because what happens is what we're seeing in the world right now. So I got up and I gave the prayer of the whatever it was. It went on for a really long time. And <laughs> I did it well, <laughs> you know. People were like little, little tears in the thing. But damn, where is the feminine in that? And how disappointing and how unbalanced. So my own personal experience of this has been because otherwise, you're going to look at last year's video and go, you're saying something completely different. <laughs> like, are you crazy? Note that the language that we use for the earth and for the weather is synonymous to the language that we use around women. They used to, just recently, they only named hurricanes and storms after women. Is that supposed to be a compliment? From the masculine perspective, What's the, how do you immediately level a woman? You're crazy. You're hysterical. Look at that girl. She's like, she's like my boyfriend right there does it. <laughs> you're crazy. You're illogical. You're irrational. You're way too fucking emotional. That's for sure. Put a lid on that action. Be like a man. Think like a man. Act like a man. Walk like a man. 
Wear pants like a man. Do you see men wearing skirts around? Why not? Why is it okay that women wear pants and it's not okay for men to wear skirts? Why? Because it's an insult to be a woman. If a man, if, a, if you're, if as a woman, if a, someone says to you, you're so strong and in control and a leader and, wow, you know how to think linearly. <laughs> you're so not emotional. It's like hanging out with a guy. It's great. What does that mean? Think of the language that we use around weather. Capricious out of control, dangerous. Those are the language that we use around women because they're synonymous. And how do we treat the earth? As I said, as disposable. And how do we treat the feminine or the woman? As disposable. Not all men do this, not all women do this, obviously. I'm talking about grand sweeping cultural dynamics that are in play all the time without us even being aware of it or giving our consent. So what does this mean? How do we bring it into balance? Well, I went from the, the banking family, okay, where my mother was very traditional. It was like growing up in Martha Stewart land, literally. Um, to Sarah, I went to St. Anne's in Brooklyn, which was an alternative school. Then I went to Sarah Lawrence, which was a deeply feminist, ardently feminist institution of higher learning where I had 10 people in a class at most, sometimes two faculty around a round table. Very different than this. This setup is a masculine setup. I sit up here and I speak at you and you listen and nod if you're being polite or, or pick your nose if you're not, right? Sarah Lawrence was configured around a feminine perspective. It's everyone is equal. Does a mother distinguish between her children? No, she loves them equally. And she also treats each one differently if she's a good mother based upon what they need because each person is different. The masculine says, you're down there, I'm up here. I'm the boss, you're the child or the employee or the wife or the whatever. And I'm in charge and if you play your cards right, I'll give my wisdom to you. The feminine is not like that. The feminine is the birth of total equality. You, all things are arising from you. The birth of you came from the earth and you gave birth to the earth in some interesting, mystical way. And so the only way to return ourselves and the planet to balance is to begin to bring in the feminine. Not the feminist, right? That's different. That's a reaction to injustice. Feminine, the divine feminine, is something different. What could it be? Could it be that we would need to reassociate on a deep, deep energetic level with the earth herself? If it's true that the feminine and the earth are the same, are synonymous, the earth gives birth, you give birth. If that's true, then would the beginning of that rebalancing begin with your relationship with nature, with earth? Yes, it does. My whole life, while I was held in the palm of this sort of masculine-centric world, as we all are, with rare exceptions, the rare exceptions being the indigenous cultures, where the feminine is embraced as a complement to the masculine, not a hindrance, not a thorn in its side, not something that needs to be controlled or put down or put out to pasture or whatever is we do with the feminine, AKA with women in our culture. These cultures, all of the indigenous cultures, have very specific and uh, sympathetic beliefs to each other. They're consistent from tribe to tribe around the globe. The woman, the feminine, is held in, a, in an esteemed position. Not many people in our country even know what that might be like. For most women in our country, country, the Bible for them is Vogue magazine. You worship at the altar of what the male has prescribed as attractive. Be skinny, wear makeup, have long legs, have big tits, have a, you know, it used to be have a no ass, now it's have a J-Lo ass. Or what's that other one's name? What's that girl's name? What? 
Beyonce? No, that's, I think Beyonce is like kind of, she looks normal. But the other one, the white lady. What? Yeah, the white lady. Oh my God. Okay. And like, oh, now, like you lost all that weight, but guess what? You have to keep the weight off, but you got to gain it in your butt. How are you going to do that? Like, how, how are we going to do that? Like, I'm, so, you know, like, I'm looking at my, it's like, you can't escape, okay? Sorry if the men are uncomfortable. They're like, this is not. So, <laughs> so I, I can't get out. I'm in a pew. It's a church. I can't leave. Ow. This is painful. And all the girls are like, ah, ha, ha, you know. <laughs> so he's like, I'm trapped. So you can just get on your knees and pray. It is a church. <laughs> pray it'll be over. Pray it'll end. So, 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 but all along while I was in these, um, you know, Sarah Lawrence was feminist, you know, it was beautiful, it was amazing, it, it versed me in all the stuff that lately I see women don't know anything about, okay? But it wasn't feminine, there's a difference. So what I found is that I was constantly, without realizing I was a child and really a card-carrying member of the patriarchy, instead of understanding what was happening, I found myself, like, going to art school and studying fashion, because that's girlish, or, and then switching to figurative sculpture, you know, because I kept looking for how am I going to, I didn't know what it was then, but I know now, it was, I was looking for my creative pulse, like the thing that was alive, the thing that was connected to everything sentient, the thing that was never asunder from God or the goddess and the Garden of Eden, that whole story, you can just park it someplace else, thank you very much, because it's not serving any of us. You and I, like every other thing on this planet, arose out of the earth. On a deep symbolic level, the earth is your mother, the father is the sun, with the moon acting as midwife. How, does that not sound more fun than take a bite of that apple, asshole? <laughs> Go ahead, take it. Take a bite. I know God told you not to, but take a bite. I mean, what, you know, you're like cursed from the jump, cursed from the jump in this culture. The Andean perspective says something different, entirely different. And so in order to incorporate that new perspective, how are we going to do it? One way is when you're on a yoga class out here with a mat on the grass, just take the mat away and practice on the grass. It's like, oh, but there's like bugs. Yeah, you nature phobes. There's some <laughs> bugs. <laughs> Be nice. Be like, hello. You know, speak. It sounds like bonkers. But in the highest teachings of Tibetan Buddhism, which we're not going to talk about tonight, but the highest teachings of Tibetan Buddhism, you are in communion with all things. What did you suppose Patanjali meant? The aim of yoga. What is it? Someone shout it out. What do they say? What do you hear in every freaking yoga class around the globe? Union. What else? One with the highest. Liberation. The end of separation. Right? Union. Yoga. Yug. From the Sanskrit, Sanskrit root yug. It means to join. It's where we get our English cognates. Jugular. Why? Because it joins the head and the heart. To join. Okay? What else do we get from yoga? Yug. Come on, conquering lions. Yoke, to yoke to something. So if it's true that the aim of the practice is to become one with everything in existence, that, that experience that you have when you have an orgasm, if you're lucky, you have it for like five seconds, right? You hang your hat on that. <laughs> when can I see you again so I can have that experience that I can't get anywhere else of being connected to everything at once, okay? The way that you get it is by beginning to reestablish, reconnect, rejoin with the earth, with nature. Am I missing? Did I get lost there? No? Okay. I have all my little people in the front because they all know I lose track and they're supposed to go, you were talking about this. <laughs> so we would say that these cultures who's, look at, this is a Russian shaman woman, okay? They're all over the world, the shamanic lineages. They're earth-based religions. They're earth-based earth -based healing practices. Did you know that in nature, if a deer goes up to a plant while it's sick, the plant immediately uh, calculates the chemicals in the saliva of the deer 
and will change its own chemistry to emit a pleasurable flavor if it can help the deer and an unfavorable flavor if it cannot help the deer. How cool is that? It was in the New York Times, so don't be looking skeptical at me. <laughs> because you know the Times always gets it right. <laughs> so so it, you could do that. You could, when you walk outside with bare feet, something's happening there, you know, that your eyes can't see and maybe your body can't feel yet. But nature is there to heal you and to complete you and to make you whole. And yet what do we do with it? The same thing we do with women. We just abuse it and exploit it and take as much as we can without any consideration for how she might feel. What's the Earth's perspective on all of this? You know? What? Go on, tell me. Give me a hint. She's pissed. <laughs> she just keeps giving, right? The gift that keeps on giving, the Earth. She keeps on showing up every day. So does the sun. Why? From love. From love. So this is the big announcement about Conquering Lion teacher training. It's shifting away. And it's, you know, I, I hate to use the word patriarchy because it just sounds like bra burning, you know, I don't shave my underarms and I like to eat what, did, I don't know. So, so, yeah, exactly. So, um, we're going to retain emptiness and karma, karma and emptiness. The efficacy of karma and emptiness is still in play. But for me and for my students, that teaching, that particular lineage was incomplete, and we needed to bring in the feminine, and that's what we're doing. So we're bringing in these shamanic lineages out of the Andes. Let's put it to you this way. The Tibetan Buddhist lineage goes back, at most, 3,500 years. Would anyone like to hazard a guess on how far back the shamanic Andean lineage goes? Over 30,000 years old, okay? And there's only one rule for all shamans, and that's the rule, the law of Aini, say Aini. Aini means right relationship, being in right relationship with all things. As you give, so you shall receive, and vice versa. So how you attain balance is always by giving in order to receive. And if you receive, you must give. And that's the only law. Right now, we're not doing that in our culture. We don't give back. We just take. We take from each other, and we take from the earth. And we don't look back. That's not functioning well, have you noticed? The world is on the cusp of total self-immolation. It's dying. We're killing it, you and I, with our bare hands. So for me, this journey has been profound because I was, as anyone can tell you who knows me at all, like a dude in a woman's body. A sexy dude, but a dude. And, and then to step into this feminine lineage, to actually have someone be able to tell me, this is what you need to do to discover and rejoin with your original power source, which is the earth, is amazing. I've been studying it for about six months. In that six months, more has changed and healed for me than has ever happened in any other outstanding spiritual lineage I've ever been a part of. And I think the reason why is because those other lineages were, are beautiful and have efficacy, but they were extremely male-dominated and masculine-driven. And in order to bring things back into balance, I think I have to fully step into this other lineage and then bring it to all of my people. Bring it to all those girls in my Conquering Lion teacher training who think that to be liberated is to have wanton sex and not to care in the morning. You gotta realize that that's the very attitude that has gotten us where we are, both men and women. And I'm hoping that you'll join me in that and learn 
what I'm learning and incorporate it and bring a measure of health and balance to your perspective and to the perspective of your family and your community and then by extension out into the world. You know, that's my, that's my deepest dream is that each one of us heals in that way and is finally the son and daughter that the earth deserves, that the sun deserves. Because right now it's not, it's not okay what's happening. You know, we all know this in our heart, but we don't know how to fix it. And this lineage and other ones I'm sure too, shamanic lineages, earth-based healing lineages, have the answers on how to fix that. There's no way you're ever going to give a shit about the earth beyond like recycling, unless you have a relationship with it. And right now how we treat the earth is how we treat women. It's like sending your mother down a dark alley every day by herself after everything she's given us. Just letting go down a dark alley by herself with thugs and demons down there ready to mug her. Every day we do that. We just walk away. So this connection that you have to recreate with earth if you don't have it is so important because you won't care about the earth and you won't know how to take care of yourself as a child of the earth until you honor where you came from, which is this divine mother and the divine father of the sun. But, you know, we're not really affecting the sun that much, you know. So, but the earth is just like, has been raped and pillaged, just like we do with women. And unless we stop, it's just going to continue. And you could say, well, good, let the whole, let the, let the human race die off. We've made such a mess of it. I'm not sure that's the answer. I'm not sure that's what the intention was behind your creation, was your demise. I don't think so, you know. And when you, when you, study and learn what these holy, holy beings have done. Their only drive on the earth is to heal. They've put up with so much, these indigenous cultures, and they keep on giving, and they keep on loving. You know? I mean, and don't they look happy? Well, she's, she's having a bad day, maybe. But... <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's like, when you start to develop this relationship with nature, what happens is you step into an authority, a power that's your own, instead of one that's borrowed. For most women in our culture, in order to have power, you have to give up your power. You have to give up your power. You have to be like a man, in some ways. You have to be like a man in order to have any power. And we all willingly do it, because we want power. We want a say, we want say so. We want impact, we want influence. But it's the wrong way. Because going in that direction that we already see is a problem. So why would you join it? Don't. Men and women I'm speaking to, not just men now, right? not just women. We all need to shift what's going on within ourselves internally, you know? And it's so beautiful. Like, you don't know me that well, but if you did, you'd see what a raging bitch I was 12 months ago. And I have my moments. I think I yelled at someone last night. But... On a lar for the large part of me, the transformation has been profound. Profound. And the power that courses through me as a result of this newfound, for me newfound, like I didn't grow up in the country, I never had any relationship with nature, I used to put salt on slugs. Did anyone else see that? Don't, someone nod at me, thank you. <laughs> you know, they shrivel, they do this, you're like five, they do that, you're like, ooh, look at the, you don't know what you're doing. She's like, I, I forgive you, do you forgive me? Okay. We're good. So that's what I wanted to say mostly. I'm kind of going on and on because it's new for me. It's new for me. So it's like that brave new world that I'm stepping into. And I can't believe how amazing it feels. And I see how um, not amazing so many people feel. And it is so simple. The feminine way is so simple. No offense, fellows, but the masculine way is so hard. To succeed in Tibetan Buddhism, you have to be like a genius. You have to be on point constantly, you know, like you have to memorize the entire Tangier. It's like three miles of books. And then maybe you'll get somewhere. And the feminine is totally different. They're like, what? Oh, you poor thing. You've never been separate. Who told you you were? And then they just teach you how to go back. And it's amazing. It's amazing. And to step into authentic power, like women, like power, you're like, uh, uh. When you step into authentic power, it is profound. And it is the power of love. That's what earth is, is love itself. Giving and giving and giving, okay? It's amazing. So, 
you know. I'm going to open this up for some questions if anyone has anything. <laughs> the, some of the men look like they want to. But no, he's smiling. They all look so beautiful in here. But does anyone have any questions about this or about anything at all? Not like, should I keep dating this guy? Not that kind of question. But any questions at all? Do you have questions? Hey, Desiree. Um, Speak loud. Yeah, what this lineage is saying that is that you were always happy until certain things happened that wrested that happiness away from you. Uh, someone dumped you in fifth grade, or your mother barked at you at the Walmart, and some part of you was traumatized, or worse things happened. For many of us, m much worse things have happened in our childhood. The shamanic lineages say that you were perfect from the moment you were born. From the get-go, you were fine. That's very different than the Western model of where creation comes from, right? The Garden of Eden. You were fine. Things happened that made you unfine. The shamanic healing practices make you fine again, and then you're happy. They are saying you've always been connected. The Tibetan Buddhist thing from a certain perspective is saying you've never been connected and good frickin' luck getting connected. You need to study for 20 years. You know, you need to do deep, long retreats. You need to do all of these things that are arduous and onerous and hard and challenging and basically destroy you. It's like entering into the army. Let's break you down. Let's break you down so that we can get to the, you know, the, the, the most essential part of Desiree, and then we're going to build you back up in this way. The, 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 these Andean lineages and other indigenous lineages are saying, like, what the? Like, who, who in the world ever misinformed you that you are anything but totally perfect just as you are? meaning how you originally were, not now. If you're like a raging bitch now, that doesn't mean you're perfect just being bitchy. That's not what it's saying. It's saying you're bitchy because things happened. You didn't come out of the womb bitching at your dad, you know? You were happy. Then what happened? Life happened. Life came and hit you upside the head with a two-by-four more than once. To, and that's how you understood this is reality. This is how things really are. They're like this. Life is hard. I got to... Dig in my heels, circle the wagons, look out for myself and a few other people, and if I'm lucky, maybe a few other people after that. That's very different than this model says, you were fine. Once we heal what went wrong post-birth, then that original happiness, that's your birthright, that's your namesake, that's your actual essence, will be revealed back to you. And that's exactly what's happened. So in case anyone's going, well, what's the efficacy of that? It's happened to me. It's not complete yet. <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing process, but it has absolutely happened, and it's incredible. Incredible. Does that help? You're like, that was long. I know, I can really go on. My boyfriend's like, you said that already five minutes ago. I'm like, I did? <laughs> Are there other questions? Hi. That's such a good question. I have one of my TTs. Desiree, right here, actually. Um, a lot of my students in New York are all up in the upper three chakras. They're in their head. We're like professional thinkers, okay? Think, 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 think. And then when they're not thinking, they're feeling, 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 thinking, 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 feeling, thinking, feeling. And it's like, you know, mayhem. And she's really good at that. She's super smart. She's super intellectual. Um, she's, <laughs> she's beautiful, but she's a thinker, you know? Because we, we worship the altar of the masculine. We worship, worship the altar of logical, linear thinking. How many times do you hear someone say to you, you're not, you're jumping all over the place? Well, yeah, that's called global diffuse awareness. That's a feminine way of understanding and experiencing the world. We take things in from all over the place. We make sense to ourselves. <laughs> Where do you think women get sixth sense? What is that? Like we're built with that? It's, it's the right brain. It's non-linear thinking. It's you take in information from all over, and then you go, it's going to rain tomorrow. Or we shouldn't go to that restaurant. And your spouse or your partner's going, what the? How, do you, how did you know that? You just knew. So you can either go to Central Park, you know, or you move out of New York, you know? It's very hard to be connected to the feminine in New York. I don't live there if you paid you, right? Yeah. Nobody really can. 
you know? Which is why they're drinking and drugging and fucking and shopping all the time. Anything to, to, to get away from the fact that I'm, I'm living in a, I'm living completely dissociated from nature, from anything that's alive, from anything that has feelings. I mean, people are like married to this, you know? It's like my best friend, my go-to. People have it on their pillow, wakes them up, they get their, ta- you know, it's like, mm, my iPhone. Mm. You know, it's like, hi, this thing doesn't love you back. This is an inanimate object. It's not like your TV. You think that TV has any feelings for you? That your best friend when you go home in the background? It doesn't give two hoots about you. It doesn't even know your name. Neither does your phone or your computer. Who does know your name? Your mother. Your birth mother and the earth. They know you, and they've always known you. How could she not? You're made of the same elements as every other thing on the, in the universe. Water, air, ether, you know? Yeah, does that, where do you live? You live in, <laughs> we're all jealous. Can we all move in with you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty small. Uh, yay. What other, yeah, hi. For the boys? <laughs> What's in it for the, for the masculine? Yeah, I would say you would create a universe that was populated with balanced and happy women. Right now, women trying to be men doesn't work, you know? Living with a poor imitation of yourself is a recipe for disaster as a man, you know? And so the more you can entreat your partner or your daughters or your mother and stuff like that, to go out into nature and to connect with that, and I'm not, I can't get into specific practices here, but you can learn them, um, is a very beautiful way of empowering them in a true sense, not in a borrowed, how they borrow, we borrow power. You know, like it used to be, you were, you were judged by who you were married to as a woman, and we only got the vote a short time ago. So what's in it for men is the rebalancing of a disease that's taken over all of us, that's living inside all of us, and that is t- spilling out into the world where we don't honor our parents. We don't honor where we come from, you know, not our birth parents. And so you would create daughters and mothers and children and wives that were happy and connected. And it isn't about surrendering power or quitting your job and getting barefoot and pregnant at all. It's the most powerful place I've ever been. And every single person, not just women, it's for men too, these lineages. This isn't, they're not, they're equally masculine and feminine. I'm calling it feminine because none of our local lineages will have anything to do with the feminine or with women, you know? Like in many churches, women still can't be priests and stuff, right? Um, And in some synagogues, the same. And forget about the mosques, you know? Um, Yeah, so that's that's what's in the offing for men. You want it. Trust me. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 All of the men that I know that are deeply involved with nature are incredibly balanced with their masculine and their feminine. They're extremely masculine. They're not like, not men, but they're in touch with their emotions, with process, with expressing their experience openly and without fear. Um, it's very beautiful, you know? So if you live in the city, you, you know, you got to get rich and get a country house, something like that, or move, you know? Just move, move. Does that help? It does. Do you have such a man in your life like that? Oh, aren't you blessed? That's so nice. Your son. Oh, so you were a good mother. Very good mother, I'm sure. Yeah. You want to be my mom? I'm in the market. Just kidding. My mom's great. He's moved out. Uh, Foster care. You can take in children. They need women like you. They do. Yeah. Does anyone else have questions? Will Will is in my teacher training program back there, and he's wearing, he's very masculine, used to work on Wall Street, and he's wearing a flower behind his ear. So it better be, is it a flower? It looks like a flower. Is it toilet paper? What is that? It's a flower, right? It's a flower, you see? That, so sir, there's your answer. So your, your partner will become you know, empowered and, and you'll get to wear flowers in your hair. Are there more? Hi.
security talks to the parents about how it's important to go out in the world and do it. And so that was okay to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I did, the one good takeaway from Tibetan Buddhism, one bad takeaway, one good, two takeaways from Tibetan Buddhism. One is never give yourself agency over to anyone other than yourself. Never give the keys to your car to anyone but yourself. It's a recipe for disaster. People are fallible. Teachings are not, but people are fallible. So if you're still stuck in a patrilineal model where you're looking outside yourself for answers, right? to the teacher, to the parent, to the priest, to the rabbi, to the whatever. If you're constantly looking for a higher authority than yourself, you're going to eventually run into problems. It doesn't mean you can't have teachers and honor them and learn from them. It just means that in many of these guru situations, you're basically you know, saying, Here, here's everything, tell me what to do. You know? And that's like a child. Adults don't need to always be told what to do. A child needs to be told what to do. Right? So that's one, is learning to develop self-trust Self-trust has been taken away from most of us. Um, we are taught not to trust ourselves, especially women. Uh, no, you're crazy. You're too emotional. You're not trustworthy. Let me make the decisions. I'm calm, okay? And then the second part of that, the one other good takeaway from Tibetan Buddhism was I learned when you don't know what to do, you never need to know what to do in any situation. You never need to know what to say, what to wear, where to sit, how to walk, who to talk to, what to do next. All you have to do at any given moment, like right now, Robert, is find someone to help. That's it. Just find someone to help. It could be with the door. It could be with paying for their food. It could be with, uh, I don't know, massaging their shoulders. But just look for someone to help, a stranger, a friend, at every moment looking to help. You never have to worry about what you should be doing. And then the karmic result of looking out for others is what? Everybody looks out for you. Everybody looks out for you. And that's been proven to me time and time again. You know? And people who are nodding are going, yeah, that's right. You, know? you get what you give. So if you give care indiscriminately, you get care indiscriminately. You don't have to ever worry, will I have enough money? Where will I end up? Uh, uh, uh. You're, because by the violet laws of karma, all of that caretaking comes back to you. So you don't have to worry. You know? It's very beautiful. Thank you for your question. That's a great question. Are there any other ones? Hi. Um, when, sometimes when we make these changes, and I don't know if you have had experience with in the last couple of months, you, you, know, you, you have a set of relationships, and then you take a step forward and you make a change in your life. I, I recently um, left a 25 year marriage, and I moved into a one room cabin in the woods in the middle of the pine barrens in New Jersey on the river by myself. And and it has just been a very empowering experience. And I don't know anything about the tradition but you know but it resonates with my yeah. um, and I have a lot of relationship people in my life who have not necessarily responded positively to mm -hmm. my time in that Yeah. So what's the most empowering way to cut them loose. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, you know my grandmother used to say you gotta trim the herd. You got to trim the herd, get rid of the dead wood. So it's natural when you make changes that not everybody's going to be on board. Why? Because usually they're afraid of losing what they have with you. So even if what they have with you isn't that great, they don't know what's down the pike. So they cling to what they do have. You have compassion for it. That's all. And once they see that you're changing for the better, that your move away from wherever you were into this more independent kind of uh, self-sufficient uh, dynamic that you're stepping into, they'll see that you've become better, kinder, more loving, not less, and that they have nothing to be afraid of. But that can take time. And as an adult woman, you n really can't be concerned about what other people think of you. Um, again, that's like a child thing. Like, what are people going to think? That's like reminiscent of the, the paradigm in your family. You know, like, what are my parents going to think? As an adult, you really got to kind of grow up and be like, you know, I know in my heart what I'm doing is right. Like, I'm with Conquering Lion, I'm changing the game midstream. I have no idea if anyone's going to apply for September, but I don't care. I mean, I care, but I don't care 
I don't care enough to stick with a formula that wasn't working. And so I'm going to do this dramatic thing. And they, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But I know in my heart it's right. And I know if it's right that it'll, it'll affect everyone properly in the way that it's meant to. You know, so as long as you're coming from love and that your intention is pure, meaning it isn't a conflicted, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the wrong reasons, you know exactly what you're doing, then everything's going to work out fine. Everything will work out fine. And the people that end up not being able to handle the changes you're making, that's, that's okay. Let them have their process, you know. Let them have their own experience and just hold space for them to have whatever, they, if they need to scream, if they need to cry, if they need to ditch you, it's okay. Let them do what they need to do. Usually they'll circle back within months or years if that hasn't happened already. You know, they come back again. So does that help? Congratulations. That's profound. It's huge. It's huge. It brings tears to my eyes. I know how hard that is to do. So congratulations. Yeah. She's like, don't make me cry. Look away. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> Talk to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're like, crying is bad too, right? It's like, oh, a sign of weakness. It's crying is a sign of love. Crying is a sign of love. That's all, you know? Like, I cry all the time now, like twice a day or something. Just a minute, I'm crying. I'll be just a second. You know? They say that um, men have certain diseases physically because they underutilize their tear ducts. And certain toxins are left, leave the body through tears, through crying. I've got an onion handy, <laughs> fellas. So, yeah, so, so think about that, you know, cry, cry. How good do you feel after you cry? Great, right? Come on. It feels good. No, you don't like crying. <laughs> You're like too much crying. No, I don't mean cry right here, like kumbaya. <laughs> Let's all hold hands and cry together. No, I don't mean that. I just mean when you want to cry, let yourself cry. You know, let it come out. It's an expression. It's natural. You know, it's so beautiful. Nothing to be afraid of. You know? And if you want to cry with me, then we can all cry together. You know, it's so nice crying. When's the last time, wh when's the last time you cried? And when's the last time you cried? This morning. There we go. And you, ma'am? Four months ago, and you, sir? It's better than crying at an AT&T commercial. <laughs> what about you, Larry? My class, okay. When's the last time you cried, Heather? This afternoon. When's the last time you cried? All the time. She's crying right now. Stop crying. There you go. And when's the last time you cried? Okay. So, like... All this crying phobia, you know, like, I'm hold on, just a second, my makeup, well, the mascara. What? It's like, cry, cry. It's healthy. It's like every other bodily function, right? You keep it in, you're, it's a problem, okay? You don't, you don't, they don't have x lax for your eyes. So you need to let it come out when it comes out. Let it come out. It's good, it's healthy, it's right. And boys too. Sir, tan man, when did you, when's the last time you cried? He's like, Tuesday at 11.05. <laughs> yeah. So, you see, now we can all admit we're all crybabies. And now none of us have to feel embarrassed or ashamed anymore when we start crying, okay? Don't run for the bathroom and lock yourself in there and have your private crying. I mean, you know, maybe you need to. Otherwise, just cry. When you do that, you give everyone permission to, look, Ani's crying right now. You give everyone permission to just be human, you know? Just be human. Allow yourself to be human. It's so beautiful, so beautiful. Okay, let's all close our eyes and do a quick five second prayer. Have both feet on the ground. Close your eyes and imagine that we're stepping on the earth itself. There's no floor beneath you, you're just in the grass, okay? Hear the birds around you, the butterflies. There's flowers sprouting up around you. Just being around you makes the earth give birth to beautiful flowers all around you. No bandhas, please. Let that all bottom out and let your roots reach down to the center of the earth. And then refusing nothing, admitting all, feel yourself as a part of the greater whole. 
in every way. And then make a wish in your heart, in your own words, that all beings everywhere reach that same degree of connectedness and wholeness as you may be catching a glimpse of right now. And how different the world would be if we all felt located, placed, like we belonged, not asunder, not thrown out of the garden, always in the garden how different the world would be. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your patience, and especially to the men for tolerating the clumsy feminist, like feminine uh, thing, you know? Thank you so much for all your beautiful questions and your presence and everything. And uh, if you're interested in this stuff, then come to New York and study with us. We have a program beginning at the end of September. We have people commuting from Hawaii, uh, Philly, Boston, Maine. The girl from Hawaii did the commute twice a month with a broken leg, a full leg cast. Yeah. So if you live in New Jersey, someone's like, you know, I live in Jersey. It's just too fun. You know, Mm -mm. (laughs) okay? If this turns you on, then join us. We will be a haven for this kind of dialogue and this kind of experience, okay? So thank you so much, everyone.